Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. My name is Reverend Jennifer Innes, and I serve with this congregation amid all that is our life, in sickness, in health, in joy, and in the struggle. Friends, as of the recording of this worship, there are votes to be counted, and the president has not yet been declared. It is good to be thinking of you and serving with you while we are deep in the unknown and all of the feelings that go with that experience. Because in the midst of the to be announced, what also is true is the care and passion and dedication we share to our higher values of hope and love and creating a more just world for all people. We know so much is broken in us and in our world. In fact, our theme this month is healing. So much is true, all at the same time. Gathering in this moment reminds us that we are not isolated and alone. We are companions in the hope and in the face of all that is. Welcome, welcome to this house. As we come together for worship, we are mindful of the many people who have traveled here before us. We recognize and honor the Peoria people who created these la their lives on these lands long before we arrived. This congregation is sustained by the care and talents and generous gifts of our members and friends. If you would like to make a financial gift, see the link in the chat or the slide at the end of the service. And if you have found us for the first time, welcome. I invite you to help us get to know you. At the end of the service, you'll see a link for our shared coffee hour on Zoom. All are welcome to that conversation. And if you'd like more information, please send a note to the church office. We have several pieces of music to offer today. The arrangement of our first hymn, Circle Round for Freedom, is by Dr. Glenn Thomas Rideout. Dr. Rideout is the Director of Worship and Music with the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And his work on this hymn is sponsored by the Unitarian Universalist Association. We also have, I invite you to listen for Holly Near's I Am Willing. Uh, that will be part of the sermon. And our closing hymn is the African-American hymn, There Is More Love Somewhere. This hymn includes Unitarian Universalist voices from all over Illinois as part of our statewide democracy revival from October 25th. And now, before we begin worship, we have a special announcement from our board president, Linda Fairbanks. Hi, everyone. We have an important congregational meeting coming up a week from today on November 15th at 1130. Um, we have a need for strong attendance for that session to have at least 73 members for a quorum so we can take action on a couple of important items for our church. First, the Social Impact Committee will be presenting uh, for vote two continuing social justice projects, climate action and racial justice. Second, the congregation will need to decide how to manage a substantial gift of $137,000 from the estate of our member, Bill Rowetter. We'll explain why that gift did not go into the trust, but instead into the non-pledge income column for our church. We'll present an immediate proposal for a capital need of the church uh, to invest in some audiovisual technology, and then a proposal for future distribution of the Rowetter funds. Discussion and questions related to the Rowetter gift, the AV project, the social justice projects will be available on November 9th and November 12th. Look to your church emails about the details for those meetings and how to attend and participate by Zoom or by phone. I hope you'll attend and lend your voice to these issues and also, of course, ultimately your vote. I think we all know how important voting is. Thanks. Thank you, Linda. Given the recent developments in our elections, this is my updated part two of our welcome. Yesterday, the news outlets reviewed all of the vote counts and declared former Vice President Joe Biden to be our president-elect. 
This news clarifies essential elements of our country's leadership. And much of the world is breathing a sigh of relief along with so many of us. And the original content of this worship remains the same. There is so much to do in living out this congregation's mission of embracing freedom, loving inclusively, growing spiritually, and healing our world. And that work begins again today. And while I'm in the moment, I have two additional service notes. First, I want to thank Sue Swanson for our pulpit decoration this month. And our middle hymn is Though I May Speak Through Bravest Fire. And it's courtesy of our sibling Unitarian Universalists of the Community Church of New York City. And now, let us enter into worship together. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle for the planet, children keep the circle whole circle round for freedom circle round for peace for all of us reading this morning is by Reverend Gretchen Haley. It's entitled, The Healing in Freedom. Freedom has a certain rhythm to it, a longing our bodies know without words, a movement away from everything small and scared, a waking up to possibility, healing backwards and forwards, even now we are beginning again, unafraid of this much mercy, tenderness, pleasure. We come to lean in, to learn the sound of liberation like the sound of our names, receiving, 
and releasing. We come to be free from more than ourselves, to call love the greatest liberty, to sing of loyalty, courage, and kindness, to remember we are all doing the best we can. Despair hasn't gotten to us yet, nor overwhelmed, which is a kind of miracle, surrounded as we are by this much beauty. Come, let us worship together. Our chalice lighting this morning is by Florence Caplow. We light this chalice today in honor of the Unitarian Universalist first principle to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. We recognize that these are not just words to be spoken. Instead, they call us out of our comfort into an ever deepening commitment. A commitment we make to the rights of all whose inherent worth and dignity are denied, diminished, or destroyed by systems of oppression. And they call us into the practice of looking into our own hearts with courage and honesty. Good morning. As we move forward into a new chapter in the history of America, I think it's a good time to reflect on the heroes of our past and the ideals that have shaped our nation. Today's story was written by Barack Obama as a letter to his daughters. It is called, Of Thee I Sing. Have I told you lately how wonderful you are? How the sound of your feet running from afar brings dancing rhythms to my day? How you laugh and sunshine spills into the room? Have I told you you are creative? A woman named Georgia O'Keeffe moved to the desert and painted petals, bone, bark. She helped us see big beauty in what is small, the hardness of stone and the softness of feathers. Have I told you that you are smart? That you braid great ideas with imagination? A man named Albert Einstein turned pictures in his mind into giant advances in science changing the world with energy and light. Have I told you that you are brave? A man named Jackie Robinson played baseball and showed us all how to turn fear to respect and respect to love. He swung his bat with the grace and strength of a lion and gave brave dreams to other dreamers. Have I told you, you are a healer. Sitting Bull was a Sioux medicine man who healed broken hearts and broken promises. It is fine that we are different, he said. For peace, it is not necessary for eagles to be crows. Though he was put in prison, his spirit soared free on the plains and his wisdom touched the generations. Have I told you that you have your own song? A woman named Billie Holiday wore a gardenia in her hair and sang beautiful blues to the world. Her voice, full of sadness and joy, made people feel deeply and add their melodies to the chorus. Have I told you that you are strong? A woman named Helen Keller fought her way through long, silent darkness. Though she could not see or hear, she taught us to look at and listen to each other. Never waiting for life to get easier, she gave others courage to face their challenges. Have I told you how important it is to honor others' sacrifices? A woman named Maya Lin designed the Vietnam Veterans Memorial to remember those who gave their lives in the war and the Civil Rights Memorial to thank the many who fought for equality. Public spaces should be filled with art, she thought, so that we can walk amidst it, recalling the past and inspired to fix the future. 
Have I told you that you are kind? A woman named Jane Adams fed the poor and helped them find jobs. She opened doors and gave people hope. She taught adults and invited children to play and laugh and let their spirits grow wide. Have I told you that you don't give up? When violence erupted in our nation, a man named Martin Luther King Jr. taught us unyielding compassion. He gave us a dream that all races and creeds would walk hand in hand. He marched and he prayed and one at a time opened hearts and saw the birth of his dream in us. Have I told you you are an explorer? A man named Neil Armstrong was the first to walk on the moon. He watched the world from way up high, and we watched his lunar landing leaps, which made us brave enough to take our own big, bold strides. Have I told you, you are inspiring. A man named Cesar Chavez showed farm workers their own power when they felt they had none. The people were poor, but worked hard and loved the land. Caesar picketed, prayed, and talked. The people listened to their hearts and marched for their rights. Caesar said, yes, you can. Have I told you that you are part of a family? A man named Abraham Lincoln knew that all of America should work together. He kept our nation one and promised freedom to enslaved sisters and brothers. This man of the people, simple and plain, ask more of our country, that we behave as kin. Have I told you to be proud to be an American? Our first president, George Washington, believed in liberty and justice for all. His barefoot soldiers crossed wintry rivers, forging ever on. He helped make an idea into a new country, strong and true, a country of principles, a country of citizens. Have I told you that America is made up of people of every kind, people of all races, religions, and beliefs, people from the coastlines and the mountains, people who have made bright lights shine by sharing their unique gifts and giving us the courage to lift one another up, to keep up the fight, to work and build upon all that is good in our nation. Have I told you that they are all a part of you? Have I told you that you are one of them and that you are the future? And have I told you that I love you? I tell you now that we are the future. We all have the potential to help write the next chapter of America's story. We can help our nation pursue its dreams and forge its future path, a path to beloved community. So be it. When we gather for worship, we honor the seasons of our lives. We share our sorrows that our burdens might be made lighter. And we share our joys that the abundance among us may be amplified and known. In this moment, we send our condolences to Jack Schlicksup and Ev Maloney as they grieve the loss of Barbara Schlicksup at age 88, who passed on October 29th. Barb was Jack's aunt by marriage and a very dear friend to Ev. We will also take this moment to recognize Veterans Day coming up soon. And I offer a prayer by the Reverend Karen Bellavance Grace. If the only prayer you ever say in your life is thank you, that will be enough. So Meister Eckhart tells us. So let us take time to say thank you to all of our siblings who have served in the armed forces, 
in the Air Force, the Army, the Coast Guard, the Navy, and the Marines. To say thank you to all who have served, whatever their role and wherever their service took them. We say thank you to those whose service was brief and to those who made a career from their service. We say thank you to those who remember their service with fondness and to those whose time in the service still haunts them. We say thank you to those who returned to us largely intact, who found jobs, started families, and who continue to find ways to serve their communities. We say thank you to veterans who returned with a brokenness so deep that they continue to struggle to find a role or even a home in our communities. In the spirit of life, in the gathering of love, in the source of all, sometimes in the face of all this, the only prayer we can offer is thank you. And we pray it will be enough. Let us take one more moment for all the joys, the sorrows, the names, the milestones, those who have been in the service, who are in our minds and on our hearts. Let us take all one more moment in silence. I invite you to be present with me. Our meditation this morning is by Reverend Vanessa Southern, and it is titled, Even This Is Enough. So much undone, so much to do, so much to heal in us and the world, so much to acquire, a meal, a healthy body, a fit one, a lover, a job, a better job. Proof we have and are enough is always just around the corner of now. And up against it, the reality of all that falls short and the limits of today. We honor those limits. If your body won't do what it used to, for right now, let it be enough. If your mind won't stop racing, or you can't think of the word, let it be enough. If you are utterly alone and in despair, be all that here with us. If today you cannot sing because your throat hurts, or you don't have the heart for music, be silent. The world won't stop spinning on her axis if you don't rise to all occasions today. Love won't cease to flow in your direction. Your heart won't stop beating and all hope won't be lost. You are part of the plan for this world's salvation. Of that, I have no doubt. The world needs its oceans of people striving to be good to carry us to the shores of hope and wash fear from the beachheads and cleanse all wounds so they can heal. But oceans are big and I'm sure there are parts that don't feel up to the task of the whole someday. Rest if you must then, like the swimmer lying on her back when she floats or the hawk carried on cushions of air Rest in places made to hold weary lives in space carved out for the doing of nothing much but being. Perhaps then you will feel in your bones, in your weary heart, the aching, healing sense that this is enough. Even this, that we are enough. You are enough. Enough. For these and all the meditations of our hearts, unspoken in this hour, I say, Amen.
from the musician and activist, Holly Near. I am open and I am willing for to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors those who go before us. So lift me up to the light of change. There is hurting in my family. There is sorrow in my town. There is panic in the nation. There is wailing the whole world round. And I am open. And I am willing, for to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors those who go before us. So lift me up to the light of change. May the children see more clearly. May the elders be more wise. May the winds of change caress us, even though it burns our eyes. For I am open and I am willing for to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors those who go before us. So lift me up to the light of change. Give me a mighty oak to hold my confusion. Give me a desert to hold my fears. Give me a sunset, hold my wonder. Give me an ocean to hold my tears. For I am open and I am willing. For to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors. Those who go before us, so lift me up to the light of change. In this week, in this moment, there is indeed a hurting in my family. There is a sorrow in my town. There is a panic in the nation. There is wailing the whole world round. As we watch and count and hope, what happens next? When the counting is done, when we know the results, what do we do? I find myself turning to the wisdom of ages. One of my favorites is from the book of Micah. What does your Lord ask of you but to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly? 
This year is a struggle when living with so many people who will not abide by mercy or justice or humility. This morning after the election is going to last for some time to come, whatever the results. And that may not be so bad if we pay attention and are open and willing. I want to offer a few thoughts and I'm going to structure them around the hard news, the good news, and the work to come. So first, the hard news. The hard news is that this election was close. This week could have been a clear repudiation of policies and leadership that promoted selfishness and self-interest. This week could have been a clear no to dismantling structures that we depend on in our society that help everybody function, that place humans first over power and money. This could have been a week of that repudiation. But that was not this week. That was not this week. The practice of power by those who wield it and want to keep it for themselves has become our social curriculum. Now, it's been the case for a very long time, four centuries. But some of us are waking up to how it is now the curriculum of this year in particular. When we talk about racism or other forms of bias, other forms of oppression, we have an opportunity to look at where that comes from, what is truly the motivation. And Ibram Kendi talks about if you follow the money or follow the power, that therein lies the justification. Race can be a useful example. It can be a useful tool to divide us, gender, ability, all of those. But the priority is, how do the people who want the power get the power and keep it? And we're getting an example of that in this moment, in this year. Those of us who benefit from empire, from white supremacy, from ableism, from heterosexism, without awareness or acknowledgement. This year, we have had a chance to listen to our siblings in marginalized communities. They have been shouting this, this reality at us until they have no breath left in them. Four years ago, after the 2016 election, part of what was so devastating, and I saw this in millions of people, and I saw this in myself, were the implications of all that was going to come. All of the hardship, all of the suffering, all of the, the potential restrictions on human bodies and human lives, That was on the docket then. In this moment, no, we couldn't have predicted a pandemic, but we're getting a deep, deep lesson in how difficult and how terrible the systems of oppression are upon us and how much we need 
leaders who are ethical, who are thoughtful, who are committed to service, to in fact fulfill those obligations and consider all the people, all of us, that each one of us matters. We have borne so much the brunt of those in power wanting to keep the power and have been working on this for a very, very long time. People have been pitting races against each other in the continued interest of a few for centuries. The hard news is that many of us in this country were willing to go along with more of that. That is the hard news. We're willing to go along with placing men in power in particular as well over all other people. That the strong man was the right man or the image of the strong man. We are also finding that that form of strength, that image of strength is not that strong either. The hard news is that there is a great struggle to come. We have much learning to do, but there is so much in place that will make life harder for all of us that we are still dying because of everything that has been in place for such a long time and has been put in place this year in terms of systems, in terms of judges, in terms of elections. That is the hard news. What I am reminded of is that we can take this seriously, thoughtfully, and try to go beyond our own perspective. That is where some of the good news begins. Because there are also, what is also true, is how many people poured their hearts and minds and bodies into making our world better this year, in this particular contest. How many people went out, including so many people from this congregation, went out into the world, willing to be out in light of the pandemic and serve and help others. We have millions of people every day practicing compassion and dedication and service all around us. We see this in when strangers help each other, when our neighbors help each other, when we help them, that our impulse is to help. That by itself is good news. That impulse to help is still so present and around us and among us. We look to our elders who are helping elders, such as former President Jimmy Carter, still modeling for us how to be of service. Part of the good news is a little bit difficult news too. In this moment, my understanding is that the lack of repudiation, the people who were willing to go with more racism and white supremacy is part of the system wanting to take a last grasp and not let go. While so many people are saying, no, we have had enough. This is a difficult moment. 
this is and for some for many of us can be a dangerous moment of how to speak up how to live out how we want to help knowing that this can be a really this can be one of the more dangerous moments when you're dismantling a system that wants to stay in power And we've been seeing this in our, in our congregations that have been offering sanctuary to protesters, for example. And how reactive the protests, the, the reactive systems have been to largely, basically peaceful protests. People saying, no, we are witnessing what's going on and we're not going to take it anymore. That is some of the good news. So we have the hard news, and we have the good news. So now what's the work to come? Again from Holly Near. May the children see more clearly. May the elders be more wise, may the winds of change caress us, even though it burns our eyes. There's a simple graphic that's been going around uh, that illustrates a conversation between a parent and a child. And the child is saying to the parent, but what if they lose? What if they lose? And the parent says, then we keep fighting for all the rights of the people. And the child, and if they win, if they actually win, oh, my dear child, it is the same answer. Or, as another person said, who wins determines the kind of work we have ahead of us, not whether or not we have work to do. Let me offer a note on how I understand work in this context. I take this idea of work in a Montessori spirit of engagement and discovery that leads to widening my experience and my horizons. I work in community with people because it is far, the work is far more than any one of us can do alone. And I need other people's knowledge and wisdom. I need your perspective. I need, I need everybody else's understanding. Amy Pop offered the story from former President Obama that calls forth so many people who have been doing the work each in their particular lives. The accumulation of that effort and that excellence is with us. We get to learn how to be good ancestors right now. The stories of those in the past helps us, trains us up to be the ancestors we want to be for the people to come. For Unitarian Universalists, we have many ancestors. The one that really comes to mind this moment is 20th century Unitarian Universalist theologian James Luther Adams, because he calls on us to be an examined faith and to take time seriously. We place ourselves deep in our liberal tradition by practicing self-criticism and being open to growth. That is the examined faith. We take time seriously by seeking to embody our ethical commitments in history. We are the history that will be. We can reflect on ourselves and all that we do, be open to discovery, 
and take our place in this moment with all the gravity that we should. A more recent ancestor, Alondria Williams, who just died this summer at the age of 42, was a Unitarian Universalist leader and organizer. A recent ancestor in a long line of people who are open and willing, and E reminded us to everyone that has the courage, the power, the ability to co-create what we want and need while rooting in what we can't lose and who we are, you are the visionary. You are the hope. You are our ancestors' dreams. No, you might never end up on someone's list somewhere, but you are on a list in someone's mind and heart. And if it's in how you move in the world so people can see by example, you are the embodiment of what we need. Thanks to all that are the embodiment. The embodiment not of productivity, but the embodiment of radical love and care and sanctuary. In the past four years, there has been so much movement in listening, witnessing, believing, understanding, and accepting the truth that has been among us for so long of how pervasive our systems of oppression are, of the desire to hold power is, of how that shows up every day for millions of people across the country, those of us who benefit from our positions of privilege, we choose when to engage, and we must keep choosing this recognition. There is so much to, to grasp, to comprehend, and then so much to say, how shall I live differently because I have seen this truth in my life? We have lived proof this week of how every life and every vote matters, that what we do in fact truly makes a difference. And with that knowledge, we can move forward. So along with waking up to Holly Near, as I did this morning, there was another one, another song in my heart. Woke up this morning in my mind, it was stayed on freedom. Woke up this morning in my mind, I was stayed on freedom. Woke up this morning in my mind, and I was stayed on freedom. Allelu, allelu, allelu. The Talmud tells us to go back to the book of Micah of walking humbly and doing justly and loving mercy. The Talmud tells us, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now, love mercy now, and walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. There has been so much good news that has come forth from this moment. Let us take up that word, take it into our hearts, and move forward into what comes next. Our closing hymn is There is More Love. And this version is from the Democracy Revival, created for October 25th by 16 Unitarian Universalists from across Illinois in partnership with the Unitarian Universalist Prison Ministry of Illinois and the UU Advocacy Network of Illinois. When we sing together, we keep on moving forward toward love, hope, peace, and a lived experience of justice. So may we go forth. Amen. 
There is more peace somewhere. More peace somewhere. I'm gonna keep on till I find it. More peace, more peace. I'm gonna keep on till I find it. There is more peace somewhere. There is more. Knowing how quickly the flame of truth may be extinguished, how easily the chalice of fellowship broken, let us be vigilant in faith. Keep peace in our hearts and make care for one another the watchwords of our work together. And so our light goes out into the world. Our benediction is inspired by the words of June Jordan from Poem for South African Women in 1978. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are not perfect, but we are perfectly fitted for this day. We are not without guilt, but we can honest, be honest to face our past as we chart a new future. We are the ones we have been waiting for, May we be bold and courageous as we make our plans and look to that horizon. May we have faith in a future that is not known. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin. <laughs>